the matter here? This bitch here tried to kill me. Have her clapped in the stocks where she belongs. That's not true, Master Bailiff, sir. He got drunk, like he always does, and ate who knows what kind of slop somewhere. You know very well what it was what poisoned me. You're trying to get rid of me and don't think I don't know it. Enough. One at a time. Tell me what happened. What makes you think she tried to poison you? She hates me. She wants to put me in the ground and then take the farm. I can see it in her eyes. She's just wishing for the day I'm dead. But she'll never see it, because I'll throw her out on her ear. Throw me out? From my own home? You useless, ale-swilling pig. Have you forgotten who got you a roof over your head? Just look at her, sir. You can see for yourself what a harpy she is. I came home after one or two ales at the tavern, ate my supper, what was left on the table for me, and went to bed. And in the morning, I woke up with my guts in agony. My head was on fire. I thought my last hour had come. If it wasn't for the old herb woman, she'd already have me in the ground. Have you forgotten the part about battering me and throwing up in the doorway? Shut your mouth, you whore! Quiet. Good wife, tell me your side of the story. Sir, that beast is good for nothing but drinking away my dowry with his cronies. If he puts his hand to a flail at all, it's only to beat me with it. We were thrown out of the farm near Ledechko that I got as a dowry, because this fool let it go to ruin and got us into debt too. They threw us out because you wouldn't back me up to the bailiff. Because I couldn't hold my head up if I lied to cover your useless ass. That's got nothing to do with you poisoning me. He boozes from morning till night and beats me. Says I don't take good enough care of him. And all he does is sit on his ass expecting me to run around cooking and cleaning for him. And now he wants to drive me out of the village saying I tried to kill him. What would I do then? Tell me about how you were poisoned, as you claim. I came home and there was a bowl of cabbage soup and a pitcher of wine on the table. So I had it and went to bed. I woke up in the early hours and had to run to the outhouse, spewing from both ends I was. I was burning up so much you could light a torch off me. And this witch here laughing up her sleeve. She wouldn't even call the herb woman for me. If I had to call the herb woman every time you get boozed up, she might as well move in with us. When I was writhing in agony on the ground, I heard her say clear as day, Ha! You got what was coming to you. Is that true? No, he's lying. What do you think happened, good wife? Nothing what hasn't been a hundred times before. He was crooked as a bishop again, and I could already hear him in the courtyard, retching and spewing. I had his supper waiting on the table, because otherwise there'd be hell to pay. Only there's no pleasing the pig. Where's the meat? And what have you. And when I told him God's honest truth, that there's no meat, because he drank all our money away, he laid into me like a madman. One slap was all you got. What was less than you deserved for your evil tongue? I ran off and hid in the barn till he'd calmed down. When I could hear him snoring like a pig, I came inside again. After a while, he started throwing up and he was spewing till dawn. Who knows what he ate when he was boozed up? Or it was the booze itself done it. And what about the herb woman? I went for her in the end. Three groschen I had to give her for some wormwood potion. I could have done that myself for nothing. And then he claimed I poisoned him. Now, I've heard enough. You, farmer, won't touch another drop of booze or I'll leave you in the stocks to dry out. And if you raise your hand to your wife again, I'll take a bludgeon to you. But a drink or two? No buts. There'll be no half measures with you. Thank you, Master Bailiff. Thank you a thousandfold. You're a wise and just man.
Bad news, I'm afraid, Master Bailiff. Very bad news. <laughs> that makes a change. Well, out with it. What happened? Two wagons that were on the way here with grain and fodder supplies were ambushed by a band of cumans. The wagoners escaped by the skin of their teeth, but the supplies are gone. Ugh, damn it. That is bad news. Worse than bad. Those were supplies for the whole year, and we won't be able to replace them. Things are hard enough as it is. Sir Divish had to lower his quota for Townburg just to let us have it. So we've no grain for the baker, no fodder for the stables? I'm afraid not, Henry. We're left with only two options. One as bad as the other. Either we can go cap in hand asking for more, and look like incompetent fools. And anyway, we'd be lucky to get any. Not too appealing, I must say. And the second option? There's still a few sacks of grain in the labourers' camp, but they bought it themselves. We could requisition it, but it would make us rather unpopular, not just with them. It's for you to decide as bailiff. We'll all I fear that... <laughs> Can't be helped. We'll just have to make do. Master Bailiff. You're new here, aren't you? Welcome. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Sylvester is my name. I got here just this very day and came looking for you right away. Uh, I heard you was looking for a handy tradesman, see? True, but it depends what you can do. Uh, I'm a baker, sir, and if I may be so bold, one of the best there is. Good. We don't have a baker yet. So, tell me something about yourself. I'll tell you, Master Bailiff, but... Only on one condition, that what I say will remain only between the two of us till Judgment Day. Well, I must say that's a surprise. But yes, I swear on my honour as bailiff. All right, then. I can see you're a worthy man. Your name precedes you. I'll be straight with you. I know this village very well, seeing as how I was here not long ago. That is, until you and Sir Radzik and his men came and cleared the place out. What, you were here? With the bandits? Uh, I was only serving them as cook and baker, like, but... But soon as I saw your lot coming, I took to my heels in a hurry. I never robbed nor hurt nobody. And I needed work, and them bandits paid well. After all, a man's got to make a living somehow. And them wasn't the kind of fellas you says no to. I see. So you were with Runt's band. Might someone recognise you? Far as I know, anyone who'd know my face is dead. Some thanks to you, sir. If word got out that I was hiding a bandit from the law... I'd rather give myself up than get you or anyone else into trouble. All I'm after is to start an honest life again. Fair enough. Since you came clean, I'll trust you and keep your secret. You're hired. Thank you, sir. You won't regret it, I promise you. Hey, Henry! Shut up, Fritz. I can't say I'm surprised to see you two here. You're nothing but trouble. Trouble? But he was asking for it. He shouldn't have started on us. Yeah, a first-class arsehole. He deserved twice what he got. And what did he get? Wait, from the start, what the hell is this all about? Well, we were just sitting in the tavern minding our own business, and this fucker comes and starts calling us good-for-nothing idlers. So I gave him a bit of a slap to teach him some manners. And Fritz gave him another to back me up. You're not going to go around beating people here, whether they ask for it or not. Everyone in this village is working their fingers to the bone except you pair of drunkards. Now, Henry, you know that's not fair. We work our asses off and we need to relax a bit after a hard day. That's right. Just an ale or two after waking up a thirst all day.
Enough. Either you put your shoulder to the wheel like everyone else, or you'll be out on your ears, mates or no mates. Henry, you can't be serious. You wouldn't do that to your best mates. You bet I would. Start doing your part, or go and find somewhere else to live. Master Bailiff? Ah, Master Baker. What is it? Focusing the baker, Sylvester, is giving short weight. Nonsense! I weigh every loaf again right in front of the customer if they ask for it. That seems sensible. What's the problem then, Marius? Well, the price was originally set for bigger loaves. Well, true, they're smaller now, but they weigh just as much. I can't deny it. I checked the weight myself. Well, what are you putting in the bread? Lead? Just flour from the wheat you ordered. Though I'm damned if I know why I'm baking white bread for folk that are used to eating even acorns. How do you weigh the bread? On the scales I brought here. How else? And why do you think they're accusing you? Uh, there's always folk like that. Nothing but gall it is. I've decided. We'll get municipal scales, then the villagers can check the weight whenever they have doubts. But that's not necessary, Master Bailiff. My customers can check the weight on my scales whenever they want. Besides, good scales don't come cheap. True enough. The mechanism itself is nothing complicated. But casting precise weights according to the original in Talmberg is no easy matter. We made scales in Scalitz. Maybe I can help with that. Are you sure? Aye. Me and Pa forged scales for weighing silver. That's got to be a lot more precise than for a loaf of bread. Excellent. I'm all for it. Sakra. I have to eat something. My insides are shriveled up with the hunger. So, how am I doing with the village? Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. The village's income is very good. Sir Divish will be pleased. The village is big enough now. Sir Divish can bring in more people if he wants, and start expanding as he was planning. I see the church is keeping the rain out at least. It still needs work, though. We're on the right track, but we haven't reached the end yet. All right, I'll get stuck in. I feel quite hungry. There's work to be done. You've decided? Good. Let's get building. We're going to build here? Indeed. Can we begin? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. We've got what we need. Let's get to work.
you, Star. I've decided what to build. Come along with me, then, and we'll start building. We're going to build here? Yes. Shall we get started? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. All good. I could do with a bite to eat. work to be done. Good choice. Come with me. going to build here? Indeed. Can we begin? I'm ready. I'll just quickly check again that we have everything we need. Hmm. We've still got the means. So, how am I doing with the village? Let's see. The village's income is very good. Sir Divish will be pleased. The village is big enough now. Sir Divish can bring in more people if he wants, and start expanding as he was planning. You finished converting the church. It's magnificent. Excellent work. So, you've done everything Sir Divish charged you with. 
Great. So the job is done. All we have to do is report to Sir Divish. Sir Divish, I finished the assignment you gave me. Pribis Labitz is up and running once more, and making money. And the church is as good as new. Indeed? That's excellent news. I can't wait to see it for myself. Of course. We can go right away. Goodbye. Welcome to Pribis Labitz. Well now, I've heard some reports, but to see it with my own two eyes. Beautiful. Me and Marius did our best. As you saw on the way here, the village is prospering, trade is booming, and the villagers are doing well. I saw the new buildings as we were riding in. You've both done a magnificent job. I owe you my gratitude and commendation. Thank you, sir. How did you manage it so quickly? We had to clear the woods and the ruins of the former buildings. I arranged supplies of building materials and victuals from traders nearby. Thanks to which we were able to build what you see here today. And the church here has become the dominant feature of the whole village. I'm especially proud of our church. Indeed, you have plenty to be proud of. Thank you both. I can say wholeheartedly that you have not disappointed me. On the contrary, you have exceeded my expectations. It's been an honor. I quite concur. Master Marius, I'd like you to stay on in the village. As soon as things have settled in the province, we can begin with the expansion as planned. As you wish, my lord. As for you, Henry, as I promised, you shall continue to have the income from the village, as well as the bailiff's office. Thank you, my lord. I thank you, Henry. Few could manage what the two of you have achieved here. 